Good morning, welcome to Cool Water. Whether you are here or whether you are joining us on live streaming, welcome on this last Sunday of October. And I'm gonna turn it over to Dale and Lynn and Dave and have them lead us in our opening music. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. November already? What happened to like July? The first song is called Canticle of the Turning. If you can, please stand and join us and uh, sing along. Two. My soul cries out for a joyful shout, and the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west, shall my name be blessed, though the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears till the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last for the deaf to be. Your name be put in the proud to shame and with those in you will be yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware of your justice, dear, for a more and know his. The hungry never earned, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. Heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, let the world is about to turn. Though nations rage from age to age, we remember this holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving world that our forebears heard is a promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and the rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. And that was David on whistle. Thanks. And also, I'd like to welcome... Welcome Lynn back. She's been, she's been, has seen her around, but we haven't. So, so Ireland and all kinds of places. Oh, I got to change for the next song.
Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we give thanks that you bring us together to be your church. You bring us from separate places to this place we call our church home. We pray that you would take us this day and that you would help us to grow and be more wholly yours through this time of worship. It's in Jesus' name that we offer our worship this day. Amen. Take a moment. Good morning again, everybody. Good to see you here. It's hard to believe that this is the last day of, well, the last Sunday of October, not the last day of October, which means that tomorrow is All Hallows Eve, or otherwise known as Halloween, which is followed by the day that teachers dread most during the school year. November 1st, the day after Halloween and the aftermath of all that candy. All Hallows Eve. A lot of people, especially if they are not familiar with the church, are unaware of got its name and where some of the traditions come from. And of course, there are other religious influences and secular things that came into what was a celebration at this time of year in certain cultures before Christianity. But when the church number first became designated as All Saints Day or All Hallows Day. And so the day before that, October 31st, is All Hallows Eve. And that's where we get the word Halloween from, All Hallows Eve. So in the church, this is a time to remember that they brought to the church and to the world as they served in the name of Christ, as they led, as they temple, to remember those people who have gifted and graced the church throughout history, and to remember special to us and who have helped to shape and form us. As we go about the work of the church, I hope that you will hold in your prayers, our regional assembly, this next weekend, November 4th and 5th, Friday night and Saturday at First Christian Church of Scottsdale, where our region will gather together. And we have seven people from our church who are registered for that and so I ask that you would hold our whole region and all our churches in prayer as are the concerns for people that we have lifted up, for people that we know that may be unknown 
to many others, but we hold them near and dear. And of course, we hold the world in our prayers. The situation in Iran with all the turmoil there, the ongoing war in Ukraine, and the tension and the conflicts where in the world. We pray for God's touch and God's compassion and God's grace. Are there any joys or cares to lift up? So we lift Judy at home and for healing and sounds like for patience during that healing and for less pain, of course. Anything else before I lead you in prayer? Lift prayers this morning in our hearts. And may we lift those prayers before I lead you in our prayer together. Gracious God, you have been so marvelous and wonderful to us. By your grace, you have given us many wonderful gifts. You have kept your promises to us and you have been faithful. Grace and your faithfulness and our attention has drifted sometimes okay. self-righteousness, prosperity, materialism of the world. They entice us and sometimes they ensnare us. We often think that we are the makers of every decision and that the world is just ours. But you are our God, you are our King, and you hold us even in times when we have wandered from your way. So we ask for your forgiveness. We remember the death of Jesus. And through his death, we are able to cast away the sin that clings so closely to know your grace, and we are able to begin again. We ask that you would continue to walk with us, to teach us, to strengthen us, so that we may love and trust and follow you as you call us to do. Give us light for darkness, courage when we face fear, hope when we are in times of despair. Give us wisdom to counter confusion forgiveness for our wrongdoings and love to undergird all. Help us to look for the joy and the hope and knowing that our sorrow is not the end, but there is new light that you bring and give us strength when we are weak. Open our hearts 
so that we might receive these gifts and that we might be aware of the gifts that you have entrusted to us and the people that you have shaped us to be. And so we ask for us to remember those who have helped to shape us and form us, those who have been models of the Christian life, those throughout the history of the church histories, those people, your love, your grace, your forbearance, your wisdom, your guidance, your peace. And we thank you for them as we name them now in the silence of our own hearts. Thank you, God, that you continue to lead us and shape us, continue to work through us, that you would be visible in our actions and that we would have you be in our eyes as we see the world, in our mouths as we speak in this world, in our hearts and in our brains and our thinking as we contemplate how you call us to be your servants. All these things we ask as we continue to hold the world in our prayers. From the tur turmoil, the despair, the wars, the conflicts, where there is understanding that is needed and peace and forbearance, we pray that your gift would come to those who lead in those situations. For we know that your wisdom is greater, so much greater than any we can begin leading. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of
Taking all I have now and I'm laying it at your feet. You'll have every failure, God. You'll have every victory. Oh, you say I'm loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong. Our scripture is from Ephesians 4, verses 7 to 16. I'll be reading from the New International Version. But to each of us, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. When he ascended on high, he took many captives. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens. And so Christ himself, delegates, the pastors and teachers, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth of, in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, better now? Okay. Well, that would have made for an interesting sermon, dragging the mic around on the ground. So, I think you could probably guess that today's message has to do with gifts and talents. Christians got talents. Reality series, long-running hit show, America's Got Talent. And I want to say thank you for the talents of people like Dale and Dave and Lynn and the music that they bring because that is definitely not one of my talents. And I'm glad other people are gifted that way. And so thank you for all you do to enrich our music. So in 
America's Got Talent and in our reality TV at what some of these shows may in the Christian life. Today's is probably pretty obvious. America's Got Talent celebrates the many, many varied talents. Everything from individual singers to whole groups of dancers and singers, magicians and acrobats, and people doing unbelievably crazy and foolish things to their bodies. It is just an absurd variety of things that these people get on the show to perform. And some go on to future rounds and some are eliminated until you have the cream of the crop. And they all are showcasing a talent that they have. And so, you come here as an individual. But together, when we arrive, we're no longer just individuals. We still are individuals. We don't lose that. But when we are here together, we become the church. We become we. We become the body of Christ together in this time and place and a part of the church the worldwide. Witnessed. The scripture tells us some very key things. You have been given gifts. You have been given a grace according to Christ's measure. You have been given the gift, gifts in the church, gifts for the church, gifts with which to serve. The great Albert Schweitzer said that the people who are truly happy are the people who know and seek the opportunity you a gift. Jesus gave you something special. Actually, many something special. You have been given gifts with which to serve in the name of Christ. Now, fortunately, we do not all have the same gifts. There is a variety of gifts. So what is you been given? And don't just sit there and think, there's nothing special about me. I don't have any gift. It doesn't have to be something that you don't have to sing like the greatest opera singer ever, like the greatest country and western. You don't have to have a athletic ability like the greatest player in your favorite sport ever. You don't have to have the knowledge of Stephen Hawking. You don't have to have that ability to serve of a gift that God has given to you. To each one is given a gift according to the measure given by Christ. What is your gift? Do you have the gift of hospitality? Do you have the gift of making people feel welcome? 
Do you have the gift of caring? Do you have the gift of reaching out to people in need, of an encouraging word, of prayer, of somebody saying to them, I'm with you, you're not alone through this. Do you have the gift of making sense out of money and numbers? Do you have the gift of teaching? Do you have do you have the gift of taking all kinds of information and putting it together and making sense out of it and presenting it in a wonderful form that goes out to the people of that congregation? Karen Blue. Passion for outreach. Do you have a heart that wants to reach out and find a way to get food to people in need? Do you have a gift for art? Do you have a gift for doing something to enhance our worship space? Do you have a way of creating beautiful scenery for the drive through nativity? Taking care of the church grounds. Do you have the gift of being a jack of all who has been instrumental in helping us through these troubled times? The gifts are many. The people are many. What is your gift? Now just think about that for a second. To say that you have a gift given by God means that God is God is seeking to work. God is seeking to touch the world through you. So don't say, I don't have a gift just because it's not huge and flashy. We all have been given something to do in the church. We all have been given a way that we can serve one another and serve Christ. And we are not complete without all of us putting those gifts together. Who was very, very across this jar, but could not reach down far enough into the jar to get the water that was in there. So the crow went and gathered pebbles and dropped them in one, the water, and that is a parable for the church. Each of us with our gifts are like one of those pebbles. By itself, it may not be all that much, but put together one by one, each of us dropping our pebbles in, it makes a difference. And it can change the reality of that situation. Instead, a world hungry, food, a world thirsty, in need of water, a world of darkness, in need of light, we dropping our pebbles in one by one make a difference and illuminate a little bit more of the kingdom of God. That's what you do 
with your gift, whatever it may be. The great monk Thomas Merton, Trappist monk and wise church theologian, he was a Trappist monk and journeyed to see the Dalai Lama close to the end of his life. And they sat and they talked about their religious traditions. And then the Dalai Lama asked Thomas Merton, what do your vows mean? What do they call you to do? Do they call you to a life of just hanging around a monastery? Or do they call you to transformation? So what do our vows, so to speak, our vows of baptism, we make when we commit ourselves to Christ? What does that call us to? Does it call us to a life of just hanging around the church? Or does it call us to transformation? To being made more and more in the image of Christ. And using those gifts, looking for those gifts. Seeing how we can develop those gifts in the world around us. When I was director of a high school camp, in the Kansas City region, CYF camp. We had a time in one of our last worships, the kids to remember their baptisms. And we remembered our baptisms in that water and drawing on the foreheads of the kids as they came forward at a point in the worship service. And then we told them that you have been called by God and you have been given gifts and you are ministers, gift and equipped by God, sent forth into the world. What does your baptism call you as that then? And now I ask that of all of us. What does your baptism do and be? How are you being transformed? How is that gift continuing to take shape within you? And so now we come to the homework assignment. You each have a strip of paper. Sometime this week, I ask you to think about it and pray about it. And ask yourself, what gift or gifts has God given me? Write one or two or three down, however many you want to, on one side. And then on the other because there's always a flip side. And the flip side is this. How will you use that gift or gifts to serve Jesus? Because that's when it begins to take hold. When it's no longer just looking at it and going, hmm, I have that gift. But it's when you take the step to use it to serve in the name of Jesus. Christians, you got talent, and that's a promise from God. Amen.
the Saints Day. I am mindful of the scripture from Hebrews that assures us we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Those people who have been a rich part of our life, of our history. Those people who have shaped us. Those people who have helped us to know Jesus. And those people who have invited us to come to this table because there is something special, there is something holy going on here. So come and know the grace of God. Come and know the love of God at this table and be refreshed. Jesus continues to call you to be. There are many forces without and within that divide and fragment us, dear God. Pride and fear, prejudice and hatred separate us from our brothers and sisters in Christ. Although we may rationalize our separations, we know deep within that you want us to be one, that you want us to be at peace. Let us be one, let us be yours. As we eat this, let us be one, let us be yours. Help us to work, witness, and live as one bound by the unity of your spirit. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them and said take and eat this is my body which is for you and then he took a cup and he poured it out and he gave it to them and said take and drink all of you this is the blood of the new covenant do this he said in remembrance of me and so, we come to the table to take the bread and the cup. There are stations on each side, bread and cup, and a self-contained unit. However you choose, let us share the Lord's Supper as one body. So, being a teacher, I must give an admonition 
before I talk about the homework and before you engage in the homework. Don't just write something down as quick as you can to get it over and done with. Can you believe students do that? I encourage you to think about it, pray about it, and let it be at work in you as Jesus seeks to be at work in you. Let us stand in our closing song.